Yo, what is up, guys? It's your boy, Bernie, here along with Pete. Yo, what's up, guys? And today, guys, we're going to do a little bit something different. This is going to be more of a podcast style. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's the same format. You don't have to worry about anything like that. But we decided to just change it up a little bit, not going live as much, but actually you know, going throughout the week and uh, kind of indulging and embracing what we saw throughout the week and talking about it on the weekend as kind of sort of a decompress, figure out, you know, if our opinions and what we say is, you know, kind of what what we feel. Because at times, you know, reactionary stuff, you could say, oh, this guy's the GOAT. You could say, oh, this guy's not a bust. This guy is a bust. And so what it leads to is more thinking and more thought provoking uh, situations for where both Pete and I can kind of figure out, okay, is this player, especially when we go into our summer league talk or whether we go to our extension talk, you know, whatever it is, whatever topic we decide to talk about, it's going to be a situation where we're actually thinking about it a little bit more over the weekend, thinking about it a little bit more over the week and then presenting to you in a podcast. Obviously I will still be doing live stream stuff. Uh, Tyrese will be live streaming with me. Pete will be live streaming with me as well, but we thought every time and, and, and you know, every once a week at some point that we could just talk, you know, as a podcast throughout the whole week. So that is the plan for today. Pete, I don't know if you got anything else to say kind of to the audience or what we're trying to do here on the charge. I really, I'm just, I'm ready to get into it. I think with summer league, you know, as big as summer league has gotten this season, I feel like there's even more discussion around like all these young guys than there's ever been at this point. So I'm just excited, man. It's good. A uh, good little change of pace for us too, you know? Yeah, exactly. And speaking of which, we're going to go right to the NBA countdown uh, to the G League report. So let's get it started. This is the NBA Summer League Report brought to you by The Charge. And with that being said, let us get right into the Summer League Report. Pete, obviously Summer League has just started. We, you know, when it comes to the Summer League, there's obviously three different parts you have kind of the California classic, which is only a couple, uh, which is really the uh, California teams and maybe one other team. I think the Miami Heat were in this year's uh, California classic. Then, of course, you have the Utah one where uh, I have previously have been to before um, watching, I believe, Ben Simmons, if I'm not mistaken, that year. <laughs> um, so I was watching that summer league, and, and that's a different one. And then, of course, we have the inaugural summer league in las vegas this one of course takes place between july 7th through the 17th and this is of course the one where most of the nba players go to the summer league has grown in popularity so much that they now have championship rings there's a lot of different things going on in the nba um and so more teams are starting to become uh familiar with it and actually starting to go previously i believe it was in orlando uh that's where it was a couple years back i know that's kind of where i believe LeBron James also kind of made his debut as well. And so there's a lot of different avenues and the summer league has just become bigger and bigger each and every year that now it's starting to become a full blown spectacle. You have NBA 2K sponsoring uh, the event and there's so many other things with it that that comes with the summer league. Uh, but enough of me sh uh, shilling about the summer league and the NBA. Let's get right into the summer league report. Pete, I want you to go first and kind of talk about what was your kind of initial reaction to the summer league itself. I mean, where, who were your standouts? Who were your disappointments? What what do you what do you notice out there? All right, let me let me start with two big takeaways. Mm -hmm. First, all right. One, I feel like the uh, overreaction to summer league is at an all time high. All right, you no. know, I think like it's very common. Like every season, I feel like somebody has a performance. Somebody either good or bad. One way or the other, we were just texting about this yesterday or two days ago, right? We look back at like Trey Young, right, in summer mm -hmm. league. Had a very poor summer league, could not hit the, you know, net one way he shot, any way he shot, right? Mm -hmm. Look at how that's turned out. He's one of the best players in the league, right? And people overreacted, thought, wow, look at this guy. He's too small for these people. He just can't get his, he can't get space to shoot. And we all found out that that just, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, Summer League is not really representative of what an NBA game is like. If anything, it's closer to being in college still, right? A lot of these dudes will never play in the NBA in Summer League. A lot of the guys that are in the rotations for these teams mm -hmm. are just, they're they are never making the league. So I, I think that's my, my first takeaway is I feel like more people are interested in Summer League this season, but people also have the uh, Summer League blinders on a little bit more than normal. So that's number one, right? Two, oh, excuse me, the voice crack. Whoa, I got excited. Uh, two, 
uh, I think I haven't really noticed second and third year players being so much of an advantage before this season, before this summer league. Did you, did you get that? Like, here, let me give you the example. The player yeah. I watched was Josh Giddy. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, did you see that game where Josh Giddy? It was Chet's big game, right? Where he mm-hmm. had the the block record in summer league. It really did not look fair that Josh Giddy was out there. He was way too good for those guys, right? And I I would say the same thing for Moses Moody against the Knicks yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. There was there was a there was a few of them. Isaiah Stewart looked incredibly good for yep. the Pistons. There was a lot of these guys in like the second third year of their NBA careers where mm-hmm. they've gotten legit minutes in big NBA games, and it's like, yeah. oh, dude, you're you're too good for this, but. Um, it, it, you know, it's gotta be nice to see these guys like go out there and they should outperform a lot of these people. They should be doing that. You know, Josh Giddy should go out there and, and wreck these guys. But mm-hmm. it, it was interesting, man. I, I, I'm just happy to see people care about basketball, like 365, you know, yeah. like for us, this is a, this is normal. We watch summer league and we care about summer league every season. Mm-hmm. And this is, uh, you know, again, one of the first years where it's like, people are taking this, like, it looks like you're watching NBA games. You know, yeah. The crowd is into it. There's their stands are full. It's awesome, dude. What about you, what are any big takeaways so far? Um, the one thing I will say, it's just kind of going to your point about the second and third year guys. What I do like about that is the fact that they're playing with guys, especially uh, from Giddy's perspective, is going to be playing with Chet Holmgren in the regular season. Like this is a great opportunity to build that team chemistry. What what players are looking for is just that camaraderie. I kind of wish that Jalen Suggs, I think he's injured, unfortunately, but I would yeah. love him to play with Paulo Bancaro and just figure out you know, kind of the style between the two, figure out the tendencies, figure out where they like to catch the ball. Because I think that really does build a lot of team chemistry. I mean, the fact that you're seeing a guy like Moses Moody just balling out right now um, is, is incredible in terms of the fact that, you know, last year he was nowhere to be found on the bench or anything like that. I mean- he did get minutes of the playoffs, like a little bit, you know, yeah. it'd be like very small stretches. You could see that you could see he, this dude just played in the NBA playoffs. Like, mm-hmm. look at, he's, he is abusing these younger guys, you know, mm-hmm. they're not ready for this. Yeah. And I, and I also think that another thing too, and maybe we can go into talking a little about the Warriors just because I believe they played your Knicks yesterday. Um, yeah, yeah. We can tell a little talk about a little bit about Kaminga struggling in that game. Um, and mm-hmm. maybe kind of go a little bit forward with that. But nevertheless, I do like what I'm seeing from uh, so even some of the guys that were on the Knicks. Uh, I was impressed by the Orlando Magic. I think they're ball, except for one player, and we'll talk about him probably a little <laughs> bit later. Um, but I was impressed. Uh, Jane Nivey, uh, you know, played really well. Uh, Hardy also played well. Uh, played well. I think there were some people in uh, the front office that were just trying to overthink it. They were thinking, ah, I don't know about this guy. But again, you, I know you have your your pushback on on that situation. But I was excited to see some of these guys. And obviously, you know, this is the NBA uh, Summer League report where we'll talk a, a lot about certain individuals. But I will say about the Summer League um, is like you said, Pete, it's a way for fans to get invested in the NBA product without it being the actual NBA season. And, and you can start getting invested in the younger guys. This is what happens with with uh, internationally with soccer. It's the same situation. You know, you get invested in the younger guys and get invested what teams, which players go where. And this is also a great opportunity um, for me personally to talk to the NBA about really expanding the roster if they decide to go to a tournament and really getting a lot more of these guys that are fighting for that spot on on an organization to get in there. And and I hope at some point in the near future, we can have a discussion about that because I think that this would be a great opportunity to get some of these guys that are trying to really battle for that spot an opportunity to play on these teams, whether it's for um, a similar, uh, for people that know European soccer, especially Premier League soccer, uh, like the Carabao Cup, which is kind of the second, I'm not sure what to call it, like the third or fourth most important trophy um in in the in the english soccer like to get that to to get that going for them and getting these guys that are in this g league or sorry summer league i want to call it g league but it's summer league getting these summer league guys to get on the roster so they can go and fight and and play in those types of games i think that would be a lot of fun um i think expanding the rosters would be a good idea 
the question is, you know, do the owners want to pay for that? And that's the, the biggest question mark. And maybe we can go into a little bit later, but I'm going way off the topic right now about <laughs> uh, summer league itself, but I'm excited. I obviously, this is like heaven to me. I love watching it. I think next year I'm planning on going to summer league. So I think that'll be a Ooh, lot nice. of fun to go, to go there and actually kind of have an in-person live experience and figure out like, is it better on TV? Is it better there? Um, and so that's going to be the the quest for next year. But hey, dude, uh, I might you might convince me to go. I was thinking about it too, watching it. Uh, this season in particular was the first year where I was like, "Dang, dude, I would I would like to be at this." You know? Yeah, especially for a, a certain twenty twenty three prospect. Um, again, I will be Ooh. making a, a video on him um, at some point, uh, some point at the end of the month or early August about the history, why teams want him, what is his skill set, and other things like that. But Again, going way off topic again. Uh, Summer League, Pete. Uh, why don't we go to individual performances or sure. uh, um, who you think stood out in the Summer League? Obviously, I know you have your stance on it. Uh, you know, a lot of people kind of overhype it. But what is what is your kind of stance on some individual uh, players that we've been watching here uh, in the Summer League? So I, so I mentioned it a little bit ago. Like, my biggest thing for Summer League is, like, you, you have to look past the stats, right? Like, you, mm -hmm. the stats are – they're almost inconsequential, really, to, like, what mm -hmm. these games actually mean. For me, my biggest – and this is totally, like, I test, like, old school. I, I just am, like, watching basketball for the feel. And we, we you mm -hmm. and I talk about this all the time. Like, you're the X's and O's, like – know actually more like how plays are being executed like the coaching strategy stuff like that and i'm i'm a field guy right i look mm -hmm. and i just try and get get a read on players and just kind of how how people are matching up to one another and in particular in summer league my biggest metric is like sounds silly but how much do you stick out from the rest of the players on the court right, right. it's not that different than like those pre-combine games where you have these, these college kids and they're just all trying to jack up shots whenever they get a you know a touch of the ball just to make sure they stick out this isn't that different than that i don't think right mm -hmm. um <clears throat> there are some exceptions like, like i do think like there are players and i think paolo is a great example of somebody who could have had more points and put up a much better statistical showing than he did in his first game but he didn't need to he was playing team basketball you know mm -hmm. um so uh, back to my point here right you're watching for the first first year guys these guys that just got drafted and i would say one of the biggest things for me is like do you look like you have already been here before do you look like you're too good for summer league already and there was a few of those guys for sure actually i would say the first little wave of games there was more of those players first year players than i think i've seen in a while Right where it looks mm -hmm. like, wow, you are better than this already. And yeah. I'll start with Paolo. I'll start with the number one pick. Right, everybody mm -hmm. lost their lost their minds about Chet's performance in his first game, breaking the record for blocks. But I think if you're a Magic fan, you have to be so excited. And I've heard too many Magic fans complaining about the Chet situation, not taking Chet and ending up with Paolo. If you, I, I don't know what you're watching. Like, this kid is going to be a bucket in the mm -hmm. league. Like, he is – look at that jump shot with that frame, and he's shooting these long threes, and he's bigger than everybody on the court. I mean, I'm going to say something that maybe is a little bit hyperbolic or uh, a little bit on the side of hyperbole here, but I do mean it in terms of his frame and watching him shoot. I mean, you have a guy that has the build of LeBron James who can shoot threes – like later career LeBron, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is the type of thing that LeBron needed and got, you know, roasted for all the time when he was a younger player. And I feel like Paolo has it in his bag already. Mm -hmm. like his his jump shot is so clean. And everybody knew that. That's the reason he was number one for a lot of people, including myself and you. Um, man, I felt like he stuck out like a sore thumb in the best way possible. Like it just looked like that is a guy that is going to make your team better significantly from the day he gets on the court. I think the Magic are going to be actually competitive this year. And I'm not saying playoff team. That's not really what I mean. I just think they're going to be surprisingly hard to beat on a lot of nights, like with the uh, amount of talent they have on their team. Yeah. And I would, I, like, I'm to the point where I'm, like, pretty confident Paolo's, like, going to be a superstar. I don't know how you feel, but I just, like... It's almost like a lock in my head. Like this dude is going to score so many points in the NBA. 
Yeah, I mean, just kind of going from that uh, from the Houston Rockets game that we watched, you know, I was really impressed with more so than anything else. Um, and it's one thing that, you know, I think a lot of people miss. And this is something that I think a lot of people overlooked when it came to Trey Young as well is the playmaking ability. The fact yep. that he's able to create and just move the ball without really being a guy that's going to try to make the home run pass, meaning that he's going to try to drive in, try to draw like four or five guys uh, onto him and then kick out to to the outside three. He's going to be a guy that knows when to give it up and when not to give it up. I think that comes from his quarterback days at O'Day um, and, and really kind of and really just playing at Duke with with other five star recruits. Um, and so to me, that that was the most impressive thing. Uh, obviously, I think the turnovers were a little uh, I think he had six turnovers in that game. So he needs yeah. to work on that a little bit. Uh, the rebounding was the only thing I was a little bit disappointed in. Um, I would like him, you know, as a guy that's 6'10", 6'11", to, to rebound. I think that that would be something where, you know, I think he can improve on. I'm not saying that he wasn't. Um, and also defensively, I think there was a lot of overhype on this guy's defensive liability. We look at the stats. He's low on the stats. But he actually played okay defense in that game um, against the number, you know, what people perceived that was the number one pick up until the draft um, in Jabari Smith. So I don't think that... Again, not saying that he's going to be an elite stopper, you know, going to move his move his feet to where he's going to get in front of a guy and things like that. But he's not a liability. It's the way I think a lot of people say that he was going into the draft. Um, and so for a me, a thousand percent, a thousand percent. And so for me, I think the scoring will come easy to him. I think he'll get a lot of easier shots. I think he'll shoot a better percentage as well. Um, last last game he shot forty one percent, but that was off of uh, twelve shots, so he's five for twelve. I, I like what I'm seeing. He was five for five on his uh, on his free throws, so that's exciting as well. A guy that you know you can't hack and make him go to the line. Um, and so for me, I'm excited about his future. I think the Orlando Magic will be a competitive team. The question for me and what was disappointed in the most was that Jalen Suggs was injured and not able to play with Paolo to get that chemistry going. So that way, early in the season, when they when they have their first game in the regular season, they're ready to go. They have a little bit of chemistry, but uh, you know they'll work on it in practice. And we also got to remember this too, Pete. And, and I know I'm going on side tangents. This is my side tangent day, apparently. Um, most of these guys haven't played in a couple months. Like these guys yep. have been working on their bodies. They've been working in the doing individual drills, not really going against live defense, which I would love to see them actually go against live defense in terms of the drills that they play in and do the things that they need to do. Cause I think it would, it would make better for reading the game a little bit better, but you know, that's here, neither here nor there. Um, but again, they haven't played in the two months. And so some of these guys are going to look a lot better than others. I think that goes for uh, Jabari Smith, who, you know, who looked okay in that Rockets game, but definitely did not mm. seem like he was the number one, you know, what was perceived as the number one pick overall. You know, you had people like Doris Burke defending him, uh, more so talking about, oh, his elite call outs and defensive things, you know, pointing yeah. and, and talking. He just didn't have a good game. And so, you know, he, I'm I'm looking forward to the next game that he plays. I think I think Jabari Smith suffered from his his biggest flaw as a player. I think showed pretty clearly in that game, and it was the same thing that kind of tormented him in in Auburn. And it was he is completely at the mercy of his guards. Like he is, he cannot play make for himself. That's just that is not a skill set that he mm -hmm. is like adept at quite yet. Like he is yeah. a, a catch and shoot like. He needs somebody who's a solid guard, and that's kind of why I've been so hesitant. I like Jabari Smith a lot long term in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to not have a very fun first year and probably second year until the Rockets guard situation kind of clears up a little bit. Because I think like Jalen Green is such a bad guard for him in, in terms of pairing. Like it's really that's why I really love Paolo to Houston. Um, <clears throat> and the 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 reason is this: like Josh Christopher, I believe it was Josh Christopher, took a lot of shots in that yeah. game. Um, and you know that is what happened at Auburn. Like the guards at Auburn would not really pass Jabari Smith the ball anywhere near enough, considering the talent of that roster and those guards. Uh, and and it was you know that was it was the same thing. Jabari Smith mm -hmm. is just he is a guy that needs a good playmaker to get him the ball. So. 
I don't even necessarily think people should watch that first game and think like, oh man, this is going to be bad for us. You know, like that, yeah. that is to be expected if you've watched any of his tape at all, mm-hmm. you know, no, those guards are just, they're not it, you know, there's, and that's nothing against Josh Christopher. He balled out. He was fine. It's more just, that doesn't really help get a, a good read on players in summer league, but mm-hmm. you know, that's like what we were talking about. Like these guys are trying to stick out, make these, you know, rosters and get minutes on rotation. So yeah, can't necessarily fault Josh Christopher, but do think you need to have a grain of salt for Jabari Smith. Like he is going to take a lot of time to develop those ball handling skills and shot creation, you know, for himself all the other stuff was solid you know it really was like i liked his his defense for the most part he was fine you know he was fine yeah about chat though let's go back to chat i feel like he was kind of the talk of the town yeah i mean i made a live stream about him i talked about him a little bit and so obviously this was previous the second game and even the second game i don't think it was necessarily that bad um obviously he went against kenny lofton jr who were both really high on um, as a prospect um, for the Memphis yeah. Grizzlies, they have what seems to be another Zank Randolph uh, in their midst uh, with maybe a little bit better three-point shooting. So that's exciting from their perspective. But to go back to the Chet thing, I do like Chet. I loved his game. I think there's a lot of great things about him. Again, does he need to work on his strength? Yes. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you know, Chet is strong enough. He's able to handle himself. But what I will say about Chet, and again, I know there's going to be a lot of people that will will nitpick his game, and I think you might be one of them. Uh, What I do like about him so far from what I'm seeing is that the defense is still elite, even at the high school level till now. It translates. The question becomes, can the offense translate here? Because that's been the biggest question mark for me as someone that's watched a lot of Chet basketball, you know, from from the mini haha days to the to the Gonzaga Bulldog days and even watching the tournament um and as many games as I can cuz you know obviously Chet being an intriguing prospect he was nicknamed the unicorn um I think there's a lot of new nicknames now that Chet has come out with or that they that they have for him um I think one of them is the slimmest reaper uh, <laughs> and so um they're poku yeah uh those are the slim towers apparently the him and poku they're the slim towers Poku is just not. I heard. I heard him described. This is so rude. I heard him described as not talented. Chet. That was his new nickname. Is, that's so rude. <laughs> it's so rude. Yeah. It is weird. It is really freaky how similar they look to one another, though. Yeah. Um. And so the one thing I will say is that, like I said, the defense obviously translated. Obviously, grabbing twelve boards, only had eleven points in that game against Lofton. But again. I'm not expecting him to be the superstar scorer, right? I mean, that stuff, if it comes, that's that's a that's a plus. Um, I'm expecting him to be kind of like a 15 and, and 12 guy, more so on the on the points and the boards, uh, with a little bit more assists. Again, the shots are still gonna be there. He's still gonna shoot the ball uh really well from three point land. I like everything about him. I know you disagree. Well, um, hey, I'm going to have to do a little chat, little, uh, I'm going to get a, do a monologue here when you're all done. Right. All right. All right. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I need to correct some of the misinformation here. All right. I feel like some fake news is being spread about my stance on chat. <laughs> I need to make this very clear. I think chat is one of the best prospects in the last like five years. Okay. I agree. I do think the talent is there. All I said in the last, in the previous stream, if anybody did not hear what I said, I said that to me, he was like the fourth or fifth prospect on my board if I had to rank them, all right? I would have put Shaden Sharp above him personally, and I would have heavily considered Jaden Ivey above him as well. Besides that, he's right there, all right? And even then, if you put me in the room where I have to make one of these choices, how can you pick against a guy who's seven foot and can dribble up the court and kind of initiate offense for himself, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you can't really fault that. And if anything, I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite in the sense that I was the biggest Mobley fan on planet Earth for a lot of the same reasons that Chet is a highly touted prospect as well, right? So I'm not pooing Chet whatsoever. I just feel like there are some concerns that I do have with Chet and his body type, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think long-term... He, and this is purely speculation, 
Okay, I have no clue. I don't know anything more than anybody else about what Chet is going to grow into, right? Mm -hmm. I just look at his body type, and I have, for every KD, for every Dirk, every, whoever you want to name that's seven foot one and has skills, right? Mm -hmm. Any of those guys, there's a hundred dudes that are that big that have just no long-term growth into their body, right? Like, AD is a freak. He's one, he's a one of one. You know, Dirk is a one of one in his right too. So I think you have to be just ever so slightly concerned with Chet's body type, right? Like he was getting bodied by Kenny Lofton Jr. in the paint, right? He was getting abused mm -hmm. by a guy for a little bit in that game that is not going to play in the NBA this season. Kenny Lofton Jr., I love Kenny Lofton Jr. I'm huge on that guy. He is not going to crack the Grizzlies roster this season. He won't do it. So if you have that in mind, what is going to happen to Chet against guys who are similarly big and strong? Kenny Lofton Jr. is a super weird body size, right? He's small-ish relatively in height. He is 270 pounds, right? That is a weird body type that Chet is not going to run into very often. Like... He's not going to be taller, that much taller than people, that much heavier than him very often, I don't think. But at the same time, you have to say, if he's getting worked that hard, like physically, by Kenny Lofton Jr., what's going to happen to him with a DeAndre Ayton? What's going to happen to him with Joel Embiid, Giannis, right? These dudes are going to bully him for the first couple of years of his NBA career. And... That is definitely a concern. I think anybody who looks at that kind of thing and just says, ah, you know, it is what it is. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't agree with you. Like, I do think there are some things that are beyond skill set alone. You know what I mean? Like, there yeah. are there's a limit to how far your skill can get you in terms of playing arguably the most physical position in the whole game, which is center, right? Or just like a four or five mix right <clears throat> the thing with chet though and this is the reason why i'm still so high on him like you watch that little step back he did from the uh what I'm, what's the word i'm missing here for he did that little dirk one-footed step back right mm -hmm. like you see that shot from that guy that size you can't be upset that's why i need to make it clear to everybody i don't dislike chet i think chet is going to be a legit player in the NBA, I think he does have superstar potential. I just worry frame to frame like he is going to probably do. And I worry about him like getting hurt, you know, like that's, it's a tough position to play and be that skinny. I don't know, man. I just, I think about it and you have the, he has the hunch in his back a little bit. I don't, you those things add up to on that? <laughs> I'm not going to go too crazy, but I do think that there are some physical concerns. And that, for me, has always been the biggest concern with Chet is just physical limitations and what can you do if he is your, if he is your paint, your rim stopper, right? Mm -hmm. The other team has Joel Embiid, right? right, who can stretch the floor, but also can equally decimate you down low. I worry what you're going to do to stop a guy like that. Like Embiid can switch what he does to you depending on what you're worst at, right? He's yeah. one of the – why he's one of the best five players in the league, arguably, you know? Mm -hmm. Chet is not going to be able to do anything against a guy like that, at least for the first two or three years of his career, at least. And that mm -hmm. is saying he would need to develop even more like – Asked a, a rate that you, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't want to get too far into the chat thing because I feel like people are still going to hear me and think I'm super down on him. I'm just not. I just have to take that stuff seriously. He plays a position where he's almost reverse Rudy Gobert, right? And <laughs> slightly. Like, he's going to still be a great rim protector. I'm not taking away his skills as a blocker. Like, yeah. that was wild what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Um there's just going to be a lot of bad matchups for him. You know, he's going to be like getting po postered probably a few times in this first season. He's going to be a viral clip on the wrong side of it a couple times. And people have to be ready for that. He's going to be bullied a few times by much bigger guys in the league. And he just seems like mentally the type of kid that's tough enough to deal with that, though. You know, that's why I'm still super high on him. That's why 
people need to move past my negative comments and the shade and sharp over him. <laughs> Look past it. That's just me being weird, like a three and D wing obsessed person. I am obsessed with those type of players. That is nothing yeah. against chat. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes down to Chet, I do think, like I said, he's a guy kind of similar to Lonzo in a sense, where he's going to be a guy that needs to work on his body. Um, we saw what happened with Lonzo the first year to where he's at right now. That's a couple years growing into his what LeVar Ball called his grown man body, right? It's the same thing that will happen to LaMelo Ball. Um, and so I think it will happen to Chet. Not saying that Chet's going to put on like the super pounds and be like, you know 250 and and jacked and you know being able to be this like demigod on 2k um but what i will say about chet is that i do think that there is some positive things to look at it um and i think that as we continue to move on throughout his career there's obviously going to be some things that people are going to like there's going to be some things that people are going to be a little bit iffy on um and i just think that it just comes to personal preference i think that the thunder did a great job with the draft that they did to get a guy in Chet Holmgren who, again, is not going to be the superstar that you think he's going to, that some people think he's going to be, right? Some people think that he's going to put up, you know, 28, 7, and 6. Like, that's not going to be Chet. That's wild. Yeah, that's crazy. Chet no is going to be a guy that's going to go from 15 to 18 points, get you twelve, uh, get you 11 to 14 rebounds a game with maybe 5 or 6 assists and, you know, be a defensive stuffer. Like, he, that's going to be his role in the NBA. And so yep. I'm excited by the fact that the the Thunder have a roster constructed around him to where he doesn't have to be the main guy. He doesn't have to be the super scorer. All he has to do is play his game that the Oklahoma City Thunder knows that he can play. And so I'm excited for that. It's going to be a very interesting situation to figure out and find out, you know, in a couple years, will Chet offensively develop into what we saw in that first summer league game? Or is he going to be a little bit less than what people think? And that's going to be uh, something that we'll have to find out in year three or four. And here, here let me chat. give you let me give you one question slash. This might even be a borderline like a hot take. All right. All right. Well, I actually am more. I'm more confident in Chet's offense than I am his defense long term. Like his wow. ceiling, his offensive ceiling, like what he is going to be as an offensive player. I feel like. This is my bold prediction. Are you ready? I think he's going to be more well known as a superstar for his offensive abilities than his defensive abilities. That's to me. I watch him and I say, like, there are not many guys that size ever in NBA history who have the the playmaking ability that I think Chet will mm -hmm. and can have. And you know, I think like like you're saying with this team, he doesn't. Not only does he not have to be the the number one scorer, like he has so many good playmakers around him and so many guys that he can take little tricks from and, you know, develop yeah. his playmaking skills with like just the three, the three player combo of him, Shea and Josh Giddy. Like these guys are going to be going to see some incredible dimes from all three of those three, those dudes. Um, I, I, I was more confident coming out of that first game, like looking at his offensive ability, like this dude is going to really be hard to guard. Like in a couple years, like that is going to be really tough for somebody to think of a Gobert. Let's go back to Gobert. How is Gobert going to guard Chet? I, uh, I, I I don't I don't think he could. You know, like he could try. Like down low, he probably could, but he can't chase him around. Uh, you know, outside the perimeter and no. you know contend with his playmaking skills. That's really really tough to deal with, and that's me the biggest counter of like why somebody should be super duper high on chet and that's like you're saying not this first season first season he's what you're saying he's 15 to 18 but long term see that that dirk one-footed step back like i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. just that one shot alone if i was an okc thunder fan i would be playing that clip over and over like this is what this guy can be this is it right here dirk i'm not saying he can be dirk but and that move was Dirk's bread and butter. So if he can get that that on lock, like that is an impossible shot to defend when you're seven foot tall. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll see about Chet. I'm, I'm curious to kind of figure out what his future is going to be. So people in the comment section, let us know down below. What do you guys think of Chet's future? Do you think it's going to be a future where we're, we're going to be praising him? Or do you think he's going to be a guy 
that's kind of a rotational piece, maybe a second or third option, maybe a third option on the team. I want to know your guys' comments and opinions in the comment section down below as it comes to Chet. All right, Pete, let's go on to other players in this G Summer League report. Um, kind of want to do like a lightning round, just like we each bring up a player and talk about him for a minute. Yeah. Um, my kind of duds of the week or kind of duds of the day for, for the Summer League so far um, coming from yesterday, RJ Hampton was one of them. I thought he was trying yeah. way too hard to try to be, you know, trying to get that contract, trying to show everybody that he's that dude. Um, and I just think that he played out of his game. He didn't play within the system, didn't play within himself, and kind of forced a lot of things. And I thought the Magic could have won that game a little bit better if he if that wasn't the case when it came to RJ Hampton. The dude was just shot chucking, wasn't moving the ball. And when that happens, I just feel like you get frustrated teammates. So I don't know. I was not impressed with uh, with RJ Hampton, and this is his third year too. So we're gonna figure out really quickly, you know, as that contract ex extension comes up, and as he's trying to vie for that contract, what's gonna happen to yeah. him in his in his future? I think like him and Cole Anthony share some of the same bad habits, and putting those two guys next to each other, where they're both kind of with that attitude. And I like Cole Anthony more than I like RJ Hampton. I think I think Cole Anthony's solid. Um, <clears throat> RJ Hampton could be solid. I just think those two dudes are a bad, bad pair together, especially yeah. when you have like, I really like Arkel Fultz and Suggs together. Like, I think that's nice. So the magic have some interesting choices to make with their guard, their guard room. I'll be, I'll be interested to see what that rotation ends up looking like as the season goes on. Um, I will bring up, <clears throat> I'll go positive, and I mentioned this guy's name earlier, Isaiah Stewart, shooting threes, looking like mm -hmm. an actual floor spacing big in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when you pair at with what they just drafted in Jalen Duran and then their guards, dude, I, I, I really like what the Pistons are building. I really like it. Like, mm -hmm. if Isaiah Stewart could – keep showing that three like what he was showing in this summer league so far and that is a, a pretty perfect pairing as far as him and Jalen Duran like bigs on the floor with those guys that's going to be a huge hard to guard lineup with Cade Jaden Ivy running around big athletic fast guards and then you have Jalen Duran and Isaiah Stewart out there too it almost doesn't matter who your fifth is that athletically is so hard to compete with what what do you uh see any Isaiah Stewart I saw I saw Isaiah Stewart. I, that was one of the games I watched. I, I I'm impressed. I've always been impressed ever since last year, kind of his style of play. Um, and so I think the fact that he's now confident to shoot threes in the game, the fact that he's willing to space the floor a little bit more, makes him more an, an intriguing player. It makes him more versatile um, yeah. instead of kind of being like a Plumley or one of these bigs that can't really stretch the floor and has to kind of stay inside besides doing pick and rolls and things like that, or setting ball screens in a horn set action or Iverson action or whatever action they decide to do with the big, uh, but it allows a versatility in the offense. Maybe they can do a little pistol action, um, kind of get him to either pop or roll that. That is when you have something like, and any coach would tell you this, like if you have someone that can stretch the floor the way that Isaiah Stewart potentially can, it makes the game a lot easier. It makes the a game a lot harder to guard when it comes to that. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that, for his future I, and the Pistons. I He's a guy that I've, I've liked a lot. Like each year he's been in the league. I, I heard somebody else say this, but I like it. I think it's unfortunate. The thing that everybody knows him for is that LeBron elbow and him freaking out last season. Yeah. Um, he's a legit talented young player and he's still a young dude. I think like I also heard he was like the third or second highest rated high school player coming out of his year. You know that? No, I did not. On average, amongst all the different high school prospect rating places, he was, I think, number two behind. Uh, it might have been behind Wiseman. I think that was the same year. It was the year before that. Regardless, he was definitely in the top five highest rated high school prospects. So that is something to uh, to keep in mind. I always think that the the pedigree of those high school players is is interesting long term. Yeah, so we'll, I mean, we'll see what happens uh, from the from the Pistons' perspective on on Isaiah Stewart. Um, 
Let me bring up another person that I was really impressed with. I got to go with my guy, Bendik Matherin from Arizona. Yes, dude yes, balled, yes, yes. Dude balled out uh, the other night. Again, I love him. I wish he went to a different team where they were not rebuilding because I think he could be a really good piece. Uh, number two option, number three option for sure. Mm. Um, and do you think superstar with him or do you think star player, someone you build around? I think I, I honestly like the fit for him and with uh, Rick Halliburton. Halliburton. I think him and Halliburton uh, together and are such a fun, fun mix together. Um, just like their their skill sets align so well, like what they what they each are good at. I mm -hmm. I think Be Benedict Matherin is going to be a legit, like really solid player in the league, and he's going to be one of those guys that might actually get some Rookie of the Year buzz just from how much opportunity he's going to end up getting this mm -hmm. first season and just his yeah. scoring. Like he is, I say this every time I think of Benedict Matherin, but he is a dog. This dude is a dog. He is going <laughs> to give it 100% every time he's on the court. I, I am huge on Benedict Matherin. I love this kid. Yeah, I, I'm excited about him. I am excited about kind of what he brings to the table. Um, you know, we can disagree on kind of the on the team that he's on, but, you know, whether he's on the Pacers, whether he's on the Bulls, whether whatever team that he's on, it doesn't matter. He's going to ball out. He's going to show you why he should have been a top four pick, top five pick. Um, and I'm excited to see how his you know career progresses from here on out because I think this was a positive sign for the Pacers, who again are in this weird rebuild, not rebuild situation where you know they have some very young players. Now they just need to add, I feel like, some veteran leadership for these guys. I know they're trying to trade Miles Turner. I don't know if they're trying to you know try to go in the sweepstakes for uh, Wabanyama, but um, yeah, whatever the case may be with that. Bendik Matherin is going to show everybody, you know, why he was a highly touted prospect going into this year. Yeah, he uh, people need to keep an eye on Benedict Matherin. I think like as time goes on, people are going to realize he is just a fun player to watch in general. You know? Yeah, he's going to be a fan favorite. Yeah, who are you who are you bringing up? Who's who's the next guy you bringing up as kind of a who dud am I going to bring stud? up? Dud or stud. Utter stud. I like this segment. We could do this like weekly, even during the regular season. Um, <clears throat> this is tough. I got a lot of guys I'm thinking of. I'm going to, I'm going to stay on the positive train here and I'm going to be a homer. Are you ready? I'm going to be a homer. Jericho with Quentin Sims. Grimes. Oh, okay. Jericho's, Jericho Sims get a little under like a, a sub sub note for him. He looks solid. Yeah. I found it interesting. People, uh, People are actually realizing Jericho Sims exists right now, like a larger <laughs> NBA fan base of yeah. people saying, like, I know you as one, like, kind of, we're like, yo, who is this guy? You know, like, I, I saw that consensus a lot yesterday during the Warriors game. Like, who is this dude? He is mad hops. Do you know Jericho Sims has the second highest vertical ever combine history? Interesting. Who's got the one? Uh, Dude, I always want to say it's like, <laughs> it's Pat Connaughton. I don't think that's who it is, <laughs> but... See. Number one vert. Somebody you wouldn't expect. Would imagine. Regardless, while you find that, Quentin Grimes. Um, I'm a huge Quentin Grimes fan as a Knicks fan in general. I know you were huge on Grimes last season, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Coming yes. into the draft? Yes, I was. I was a huge Grimes guy. I was not as much, but I very quickly became a Grimes guy, and I can only tell you that it's grown over the last year. I am very high on Grimes. He is... I would argue behind RJ is my favorite prospect that the Knicks have right now in terms of his long-term potential. Like, I mm -hmm. think he's going to be a legit player in the NBA for a long time. And yesterday yeah. was a great example. Like, I think that he kind of got swept under the rug last season because of injuries, just kept, mm -hmm. like, nagging all season for him. He would come in, look great, have a 30-point game out of nowhere, and then he's hurt for three weeks. And it was mm -hmm. kind of off-on for him all season. Yesterday, just like the guys I mentioned earlier, where it's a second-year player, got some actual NBA minutes, you expect them to come into Summer League and look mm -hmm. better than everybody. Look great. I mean, the only person that he didn't look better than was Moses Moody, and Moses Moody just got minutes in the playoffs like we talked about earlier. So yeah. he shouldn't necessarily look as good as him anyway. So I'm I'm so happy with Quentin Grimes as a 3 and D, just kind of versatile guard in this league. Mm -hmm. is uh, He's going to be a stud. He's going to be a stud. People need to keep an eye out for him, especially in a big city. New York, he's going to get a lot of attention in this upcoming season. 
Yeah. Um, another stud I'm going to give my kind of stud of the stud of the game or stud of the week to. Um, who am I going to give it to? There's one person. Josh Christopher, I think, played somewhat well. I think that his shooting percentage was a little low. So Just took away so much from the rest of his team. Yeah, so I, I, can't, can't, I can't give it to him. I can't give him stud of the week. But uh, I would give Hardy stud of the week or mm. you know, one of the stud of the week. Hardy, a guy that a lot of people were very kind of iffy on. A lot of prop GMs were like, well, this guy sucked or this guy did not play very well in the summer league or sorry, in the G League Ignite. Um, and a lot of people were like, eh, I don't know if I really want him, even though he was a top five prospect uh, going into the year. I think that he played really well. Obviously, his three point shot was not it last night. Um, obviously, going two for seven. So that obviously is not a good percentage. But still did a lot of good things. Turnover-wise, not so well. Uh, but I'm still excited to see his growth and progression as he becomes uh, a player that I think could take maybe a year or two to kind of finally figure it out. And once he does, I think you're going to unlock a full a full potential Jaden Hardy, where as you know, a lot of people just I think they overthought Jaden Hardy, in my opinion. See, I you know, I, I like Jaden Hardy, and I think you said I earlier, I think you alluded to the fact that I don't like Jaden Hardy. I honestly think he went like ten picks too late, personally. He should have gone in the twenties, in my yeah. opinion. And I think at the very worst, he's like a Devontae Graham style of player, right? Where mm-hmm. He is going to be a bucket. Like, this kid can score, right? It's just all the other negative stuff that he brings to your team's, right. you know, flow and arguably your chemistry, right? Like, mm-hmm. he is going to jack up shots. That is literally, if there's anything he might be the greatest player in Summer League history at, it's just being a shot chucker. Like, he mm-hmm. wants to shoot every time he touches the ball. He's not a playmaker, you know, he really is not. Like, he can't really create for anybody else. But this is the type of guy that, like, people get in the 30s and then you look back in a few years and he's, like, us. he's one of the better six men in the league. You know, that, to me, is, like, the ideal Jaden Hardy. A few years, he's your six man, comes off the bench, gives you a few buckets, and then you hide him defensively. Yeah. I don't really see that ever getting to be like serviceable, like to a starting player type standard in the league. But he's mm-hmm. he's a he's a scorer for sure. He's a gunner. He's gonna get you. He's gonna get you a few points. That's for sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna go. Uh, what do we call it? Studs or duds? I'm gonna give yes. you a big dud. I'm gonna he's... also go from the uh, the Warriors. I felt like Kuminga was a bit of a dud yesterday. Yeah. And. Reason I f- the reason I felt like he was a dud was the same reason I was low on him coming the into the draft last season. And it's the effort. It's the locked-in-ness. I know that's not a term, but I'm using it. The locked-in-ness of Kuminga. And it's kind of a, a double-edged sword, right? Where I, I almost feel like Kuminga comes into certain games like this in particular, and he feels like maybe it's beneath him. You know, mm-hmm. he's just going out there to put up some insanely sick highlight dunk or some crazy block. He's such a freak athlete that he's going to be able to do stuff like that, mm-hmm. even when he m- maybe isn't like trying 100 percent. Right. Uh, but it, but it was a lot of the same stuff that I was down on him coming out of the G League into the draft where it just looks like the the focus and the the attention and the stick to itiveness to all the little details of winning basketball just were not there. And I, I wonder if that is more a byproduct of the fact that he literally just won a ring and, you know, got some minutes in the in the playoffs again like Moody did. Mm-hmm. I, I saw the the inverse of Moody in this game where, you know, Moody clearly did not think that this was beneath him. You know, he yeah. went out there and he wanted to show, like I keep saying, I'm a second-year player. I am better than all these dudes. I do not belong in summer league. I think that Kuminga took it the other way. He's like, I don't belong in summer league. I'm not going to put any effort forth or not as much as I probably should. So I I was a big dud on that, or I gave him a big dud on that just because I, I think that that is super limiting to just about any player long term. Like if you have that in you, that's not that far off of like what the situation with Aiton is right now, you know, yeah. or what, it, what do we hear about Aiton? Like, like from the first year he was in the league, he's playing for a second contract. You know, he's playing for, playing for the big bucks, and that's kind of all he cares about, right? 
and yeah. now he can't, he can't even get a contract right now. So mm-hmm. I always worry about the guys who get a little bit low effort when they're just not into mm-hmm. it. So I don't know what you what you what you see with Kuminga. Um, I kind of saw similar things. I thought that the that the effort was not there last night. I don't know if that was because he was playing with his brother and he kind of wanted his brother to shine or what it was, but it definitely was frustrating to see a guy that I was high on uh, coming into that draft, thinking that, you know, maybe he can be something. I, I wonder if it's because of the play time that he's going to get when he does get to a full-time roster. You know, it, you know, the thing that I would say to him is like, be patient and really work yourself into the starting rotation. Work yourself into at least the bench rotation to get yourself those minutes that you want. I think that there was I think there's some of that frustration when it comes from him because he obviously is a rookie and you know when it comes to these young guys and you know we can probably speak from experience when it comes to being young uh younger, right? In our in the early 20s and things like that is that we're trying to prove it to everybody like I'm not a failure. I can do this. I don't need the, this person telling me what I can or can't do. And so I think that's where it comes from personally. And so I just think he needs to be patient with it. You're playing in the warrior system, like be patient with whatever Kerr or Atkinson or whoever's kind of the coach that is a player development coach is trying to get you to do, because I think that is where a lot of these players kind of lose focus is that they think that they're ready right now when really they need to kind of, it's almost kind of like I talked about with my Celtics years back with the oven bake process. Be patient, let it develop, and then when you're finally getting those opportunities, that's when you can show the coach, hey, I really can do this. Or, hey, coach, I really can ball out like this. And so we'll see what happens, man. I'm a, I'm interested to see kind of how the rest of the summer league goes goes for him. He just, he just looked frustrated to be there in general, yeah. which I, I don't know. I, I, I'm one of those body language guys. You know, I look at that kind of stuff. Like, to me, that's important long term. Like, the tone mm-hmm. it sets and the impression it puts on the rest of the players around you and especially your coaches, too. Mm-hmm. I think they all, they all see that stuff, you know. And if they feel like you are you think you're better than them, <laughs> you think you're better than me, like, it's that is not a bad, like, a good impression to give yeah. off. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think I hold that – I think I hold – against players a little bit more than you do Mm -hmm. um it's something it's something to just keep an eye on that's for sure yeah uh Um, do you have any any more studs or duds my friend studs i got two studs for you i got caleb houston being a stud for the orlando (laughs) magic i thought he played really well in the second year trying to kind of prove that he should be a rotation guy um a little bit more uh again shot really good percentages gonna be a, a three and d guy your favorite um, and so I'm excited to see his growth and development moving forward. Um, and then another stud guy I got, I got to give it to Scotty Pippen Jr., man. I, I think he, lo- he looked nice. He he looks good. And again, I know that there's going to be that situation when it comes to Scotty Pippen Jr. where people are going to say, oh, it's because, you know, he's got the name Pippen. That's the reason why he's in this. Um, but I think he actually balled out really well. He has a lot of good reads, I thought. The game last night was not indicative of who he is as a player. Um, I think from watching him from the California Classic, you could see that there's some patience with him. He has that point guard ability, definitely a different position than what Scotty played um, when he was with the Bulls way back when. Um, And so I'm excited to see his growth and development as he continues to be an L.A. Laker. Um, And I think that he has a chance to make this roster just for the regular season roster if he plays his cards right. Dang, I, I mean, I hope so. That's for sure. I really hope so. Yeah, I didn't get to see too much, so I can't give you too much on him, but mm-hmm. little bit I watched, I, I mean, I agree with you completely. But, unfortunately, I do have to give a dud to a player, and that is going to be Sharif O'Neal. Oof. Dud. Yeah. He, he's a guy that struggled, and I, and, and I think whatever we you know, Obviously, had the open heart surgery, so I do feel for him. I want him to. I root for him. Um, watched him in high school, <laughs> so I want to see him succeed. Uh, but obviously, last night was not his night. He struggled to to score around the rim. He struggled to you know get easy chances for himself. But there was some positive things that I do like about him. Um, I just think he's going to be a guy where you have to maybe put him in the G League, maybe put him you know kind of with the South Bay Lakers and let him work his way up. 
to get to an LA Lakers roster spot or whatever roster spot he can he decides to go on to. I think there's some good things about him, but he just struggled to score around the rim last night. He struggled to kind of show you why he is someone that needs to be on a, on a roster right now because I think that he's a guy that just needs to go to the G League, develop more as a player, and then hopefully in a year or two he can kind of be that guy that's at least a rotation guy um, for you. So that's kind of my last dud uh, of the week. Yeah, he's a guy like like you said. Like it's kind of hard to hold it against him. Like he's there based on pedigree alone. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah. uh, any other circumstance, uh, and I hate to be rude, like he just wouldn't be there with these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to fault him. Like he's missed so much time of his young career playing basketball that kind of is what it is with him. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. one of those things where you hope just based on what he's gone through, who he is, who he's, you know, the stock he's from, like this is the kind of guy you want to succeed. Uh, maybe long term, you know. I I agree with you. Good couple years in the G League, maybe we'll see. You know, yeah. he's got he's got skills. That's for sure. It's just it was didn't shine through in that mm-hmm. game. That's for sure. Um, let me give you. Oh man, I'm really trying to debate who I want to pick here because <clears throat> there's a lot of guys that I felt like deserve maybe a shout out. I'm going to go with a guy that I was very surprised did not get more minutes last season, and I think it was kind of a – this will lead to a bigger conversation. We could honestly almost transition to the Brooklyn Nets out of this. But Cam Thomas. Yep, I was going to say, Cam Thomas, he played well. Cam Thomas looked really great. Like Cam Thomas, again, another guy that looked like he did not belong in summer league, looked like he was too good for the rest of the guys on the court. And he is, you know, like offensively. Mm -hmm. Is the same guy last season. This is what we said about him coming into last year. You know, like this is a guy that can score in the NBA right now. He's capable of doing so. Uh, it, it, I'm honestly just going to say this for Camp Thomas. I kind of expected this from him. I think he's a legitimately good player. I think he's going to be good in the NBA long term. Why, why did he not get minutes for the Nets? Can, do you have any answer for that question? Like why was he – their team was so thin, Bernie, and this guy is a bucket. Um, the only thing really, – I, I really don't understand it. I think the only thing – and we talked about it last year because we actually did like that pickup in last year's draft for him. Yeah. Um, I just think that they obviously are KD and Kyrie heavy. I think those guys made the decisions. And, you know, when it comes to older players, they do not want to play with the younger guys. And I could – and that's all the way from – elementary to professional. If you're playing with the person that's younger than you, that's not the same skill level at times, these players will not want to play with you. And and that's yeah. just the way it is at this point. Um, and I just think Cam Thomas just needed that year to kind of be in the G League and work on his game and obviously shows you um, in this game why he is deserving of that spot. Again, didn't shoot particularly good percentages, especially from three. Um but he was efficient in his scoring somewhat. Um, I think that he does a lot of good things for you. I think he's going to be kind of like that score guard, um, you know, combo scoring guard. So I'm, I'm excited to actually see him play and kind of see him continue to develop and see if the Nets maybe may not build around him, but have him as kind of a piece that gets a lot more action this season, you know, depending on if KD and Kyrie leave. It, very much so. You know, I th- I think he's a guy that definitely needs more minutes. I, I, I don't know, man. I just I watched that game of him, and he was, you know, cooking out there. I think, what did he end with, like 31 points, I think, in his summer league game he played? Th- 31 um, points, uh, two rebounds, two assists, two turnovers with one ball. Yeah, I mean, he's solid, man. Like, I, I don't know, dude. I just, like, I'm watching that game and getting flashbacks of the Nets getting swept pro by the Celtics and, like, mm-hmm. just not having enough offense – like offensive options to contend with the Celtics mm-hmm. defense. And I just like looked at that. And I was like, dude, you're telling me this guy couldn't have cracked your rotation even a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, w- I was stunned by that. Just like, again, I just can't get over these, these teams not playing some of these younger dudes, just a, a few minutes, you know, just get yeah. them out there, get that experience. Um, I like Cam Thomas a lot. Only other guy. I want to mention one last guy, two guys, just because, uh, I don't think we touched on him enough for how I think impressive they were is Duran for the Pistons. Duran, I and loved him. 
Yep. Jalen Duran and uh, Jaden Ivey. I think both yeah. of them, like we've mentioned them both a couple times. Those dudes looked really, really good. Like yeah. the Pistons, we talked about Isaiah Stewart earlier. This is going to be such a fun team. This might be my league pass team this season. I might be like all in on the Pistons just to watch like a lot of their games. Mm-hmm. People need to pay attention to this team. They yeah. really need to pay attention because just just Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duren, if you just had those two guys, I would say you should be excited. But you don't just have those guys. You have <laughs> you have Cade Cunningham. You have Isaiah Stewart. You have Killian Hayes, whatever you think of Killian mm-hmm. Hayes. You have all these dudes, man. This right. team is going to be... I, I think this team is going to be like a, a young force to be reckoned with. Almost like you look at like... Uh, it's the equivalent team. I'm thinking of like the Nets in like like four or five years ago, you know, they before they got when they had D Low, but it was a lot of young dudes, like it was Jared Allen and it was Karis Levert and all these yeah. young guys that like had pedigree. You didn't necessarily think about them all the time. Like they're not mm-hmm. the biggest stars in the league. This is like very similar situation. You know, you have this like a an older coach who's well respected, has a lot of success in Dwayne mm-hmm. Casey. He's going to get a lot out of these guys. I would pay attention to them. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Just pay attention to Jaden Ivey. I think people are already excited to watch him. But you and I love Jalen Duran. I think he is going to be a legitimate NBA center for a long time. He he already looks like a man out there. Like he's he's he really he's six. He was he's I believe he's six ten, six eleven, two fifty. Like he he's gonna bully some people. And again, and when they played against uh, Gonzaga in that game, like you could see Duran shine in that moment. You know, especially you know when it comes to Gonzaga, which is a well known program. You know, whether they win or not, that's a different conversation for championships. But you know, a well known nationally ranked team. And Jalen Duran is balling in a very un... I would say Memphis is not a very well-known program around the league. Obviously, they had um, Derrick Rose back in the day, but that's really been it. They haven't had any other players since uh, Derrick Rose. And now that you you know now that Penny Hardaway is the coach, um, you know obviously you had Imani Bates who struggled this year, but you had Jalen Duran who's really showing you that he's a man amongst boys. Um, in that tournament so I'm excited about his future in the NBA I think he's going to be a great center wherever team he decides to go on you know whether he stays on the Pistons or whether you know maybe he's like I I need a new challenge you know whatever it is I think he'll be successful in this league and I think one thing too people need to pay attention to he is literally like one of the four or five youngest players in this draft he's Mm -hmm. 18 still you know and he (laughs) He's 18. He literally looks like he's got Bam Adebayo's frame. Like, this dude's yeah. a freak, you know? I actually have one more stud, and I think you're going to like this one. Um, I I can't believe I almost forgot him. Uh, the Cavaliers. Chai. Abaji? Dude. What a steal. What a I love, steal I he's going to pick up for them. That is going to be I, I I honestly almost like like want to pick that as like a lot of people are already penciling in Jaden Hardy at thirty seven as like the steal of the draft. No, it's not as crazy late of a pickup. Like what what was his pick? Like sixteen, I think. Something like that. I can take a look at the draft class really quick. But he he is going to be so good in the league. I I don't know. I just everything I liked about him pre draft. Uh, he showed everything in that game against the Spurs in the summer league. Um. I really like him. And then they got uh, Nembhard, too. RJ Nembhard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I just think the Cavs had kind of a sneaky good draft. I don't think people gave them a lot of credit. Uh, people aren't paying attention to that team. But look look out for them, man. I, I like them a lot. In that Four, same game, you had uh, Blake 14. Wesley looked really good, too. He was 14, picked 14. 14. Right, still, still, good pickup. I think that's a great pick. I, I, I like that kid a lot. Yeah. And then to go so, back to... You're big on him. To go back to your combine thing, actually, the number one guy with the max vertical leap is Keon Johnson with 48. Oh, Keon Johnson at 48. Oh, my gosh. With a standing vert of 41.5. Dang, man. Um, and Crazy. let me let me just give one shout-out to Surprise of the Week. And, you know, there's been nothing on this guy. I think a lot of us, you know, when, when it comes to the Bulls roster, we have – no idea who's mm-hmm. on it just because we've been looking, you know, at Zach Levine and his extension. But Marco Simeovich 
played yes. really well in his G League game debut. Um, put up 27 points on 10 of 19 shooting. Didn't make a single three, but was 87.5% from the free throw line. Uh, 13 total rebounds with three blocks, two turnovers, one assist, one steal. He played tremendous. Again, this is my surprise of the week because, again, I have not heard anything about this guy. I don't know anything about him, but he absolutely balled out in his first game. The question is, can he be like Ruby Santos? And, you know, and, and Ruby Santos is struggling a little bit. But can he continue this sort of wave that he's on right now and carry that scoring momentum onto the next game? That's going to be my question mark for him. But I want to shout him out because he absolutely balled out in his game before. Yeah, Simonovic, he was so good, especially in overtime for the Bulls. I mean, I, I actually highly recommend Simonovic. Go back and watch anybody. Go back and watch that overtime win. He was devastating in overtime for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually, I'll give you I'll give you one last person, too. Just a similar. Stutter does. Simonov he had Simonovic. This guy is a big stud. I actually really liked this pick in the draft. But uh, Nikola Jovic, not oh, Jovic. Jovic from, from the Heat? Not the, not the Joker. Nikola Jovic. People need to get familiar. I mean, that's going to be a, co a confusing thing for a lot of people for a couple of years. Uh, I think that kid is going to be a legit player in the league, too. I know I keep saying that for a lot of guys, but I just think that this draft is so deep. Uh, and he is that guy is very skilled for how big he is. Go go check out Nikola Jovic with a V if you haven't seen him before. His first game was uh, he was very good. I think he had 25 in his first game. He was it was yeah. really good. Is this the California Classic or is this the Vegas tournament? I believe it was Vegas. I think it was two days ago. Okay, I'll take a look at this team. Be wrong though. Heat. I don't think the Heat are in this one. It might have been the might have been the California it, Classic. It must have been the California Classic. Twenty five. He had twenty five points in a double double three days ago against. Who did the Heat play? It was in the California Classic. It was against the Golden Utah? State. Or was it the? Let me see if this is the one. It was on the fifth of July. On the fifth of July, maybe it was. The, oh yeah, because this would be the final game. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Nikola Jovic. He was. Uh, he was nice, man. He was. He was really good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely someone to check out on. And again, guys, this has kind of been your NBA summer league report, brought to you by the Charge. Obviously, bringing you the latest NBA news and rumors, and also basketball opinions. And let us know what you guys thought about the Summer League so far. Obviously, there's another week or another two weeks maybe of Summer League. Let me double check. I know it ends on the 17th. So we got another, probably another week and a day left of Summer League. Really a week. And so this is going to be a very good situation for a lot of these teams. If we look at the teams that are involved. Um, let me see here. Um, you have obviously the Nets. Hornets, Bulls, Cavaliers, Mavericks, Nuggets, Pistons, Warriors, Rockets, Pacers, Lakers, Bucks, Timberwolves, Knicks, Magic, Suns, Trailblazers, and Spurs. So you know that this is going to be a great opportunity for a lot of these guys that are vying for the for the rotation spots, vying for a contract to get into the NBA. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I think as the as we have one more week left of summer league, everyone should be definitely paying attention to these teams and figuring out what. Um, what is going to be going on for the near future because as we get closer to the preseason as we get closer to the um kind of the regular season you're going to be looking at these teams and trying to figure out which of these guys you watched could potentially be on the roster and again it's exciting to see that the summer league has grown to a bigger spectacle obviously in, in vegas you know all the scouts all the gms everybody and their mamas down there lebron james is there everybody's there and so this is a good opportunity and a great way for the league to grow as an organization and grow in numbers um, and really develop the way and develop these players the way that we want them to. And also a great opportunity for these assistant coaches who normally are just assistants, get a head coaching opportunity to coach these guys and seeing if mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity for them to want to be a coach or do they want to stay an assistant? Most definitely, yeah. And I think, you know, one other little caveat for me too, this season in particular, I think like it's it's especially good to familiarize yourself with some of these younger dudes who are going to spend half the season in the G League at least, right? Mm -hmm. The second half of this year is going to be a tank fest. I don't know if people are prepared as much for that as they need to be. Like, we're coming into this Victor Wimbanyama year. Wimbanyama, excuse me. 
This is going to be like maybe one of the ultimate tank fests for mm-hmm. probably five to seven teams. Like this is, I don't think people understand how much of a prospect this guy really is. Like, do you put him on the same level? I almost would borderline say he might be like, I don't know. Is it Zion level of hype for this kid, Bernie? Amongst like teams I, in the I league, think it's, actually, I think it's higher. I think it's, it's higher. higher too. It's I think higher. This is the high. This is the highest one since probably Braun. And I know people say that all the time. Like people said that for Luca. People said that for Zion. You know, there are people who people have said this for before. Mm-hmm. I would say the only guy in the last ten years that's comparable is Zion in AD. Those are the two. Yeah. Victor Wembanyama, there are going to be teams that are going to sell their soul this season to try and get this kid on their squad. And that means running like borderline G League young dudes out on the court some nights. So mm-hmm. attention to these dudes. Some of these teams, like Indiana might be one of those teams. The Pacers, Utah, I think, is going to be one of those teams. Look out for these young cats on their team. They're going to get a lot of opportunities this year. Definitely. Um, and so let us know in the comment section down below or – if you guys are listening to this podcast, iTunes, Spotify, whatever uh, platform we decide to put this on, you know, leave a review, leave a five-star review, whatever you can to get the numbers up. Again, we want to continue to grow this channel, continue to grow this podcast into something special. So I hope you guys will hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you're on YouTube. And remember to give us a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Apple Podcasts because, again, we're trying to grow. I'm excited about you know this opportunity to put this finally on a podcast platform um, and both Pete and I are excited to kind of continue doing this um, for you guys and showing and, you know, whether you are listening to this in the car, whether you're watching this during work, um, you know, hopefully you don't get in trouble when you do that. But, you know, again, continue to grow and and really help us grow as not only just people showing you or telling you guys about this, but also uh, give us the knowledge too. like what is your you know, if you're a Cavaliers fan, what is your perspective on everything? If you're a Hornets fan. You know, we want to hear you guys talk um, and let us know what you guys think of your team individually um, and whether we're right or wrong on the gate on the engagement or gauging like which way a player or a team can go. Um, So, again, let us know in the comment section down below.